So elsewhere in Europe, Spain yesterday plunged into political gridlock after an inconclusive national elections ended with no clear majority. The far-right opposition party and its coalition partners secured 169 seats in parliament, but that is seven short of the 176 required to win an absolute majority. Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez's Socialist Party and its likely coalition partners also fell short. They have 153 seats. The results led to a hung parliament. Both coalitions will need to negotiate with smaller parties to try and reach the majority threshold. It's also possible that a new election could be held if no deals are made. And those elections in Spain and the impact of the rise of the extreme right in Europe is something that's being watched closely in neighboring France. And joining us now from Paris, French Transport Minister Clement Bon. Mr. Prime, Mr. Minister, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, let's start right there. Uh, as you, from your vantage point in Paris, as you're watching what's happening uh, in Spain, uh, what is your level of concern uh, to your, about your, what's happening with your neighbor? Thank you very much, and thank you very much for your invitation this morning. And of course, we are watching closely what is happening in Spain. It is partly what we see in a lot of Western democracies, which is more difficult coalitions, hung parliament sometimes. We can see it in a lot of parliamentary democracies across the EU, across Europe. Uh, what is interesting, I think, is that it was expected that far right would be extremely high. Actually, the far right party lost ground, which proves that when we fight, uh, on European issues, pro-Europe agenda, pro-reform agenda, pro-democracy and Western values agenda, as Pedro Sanchez and the main right-wing party did, they can be first. And now there are discussions on the coalition that will probably take uh, some weeks, but I think it's also a positive signal that far right is not on a rise which cannot be stopped in, uh, in European democracies and European countries. Uh, so interesting to hear what's happening in Spain, but let's turn back to Ukraine because what we're seeing with this stalemated or largely stalemated military situation is kind of a test of patience for Americans. Talk about the patience that you see in France and Europe for sustaining this battle if there is not a clear military outcome uh, in the months ahead. It will probably take time still, but what we see uh, very clearly is that Putin bets on the fact that European countries, the US, would lack patience and would sustain uh, support Ukraine for a few weeks, a few months, but not for a long period of time. We are ready to support Ukraine for as long and as much as necessary. We are doing it, the US and European partners. And I think there should be no doubt that we will bring the military and civilian support which is necessary. Nobody really knows how much time it takes. But Ukraine is up and fighting. I was there three months ago in Odessa, actually. It's really painful to see what is happening these days in Odessa. But we will bring the civilian support which is necessary, for instance, to rebuild, to rebuild the train systems, the infrastructure which are necessary. And of course, the military support, mainly by the US, but also by European partners, including France, in the forefront. We will not lose that and lose that support. Mr. Minister, this is Richard Haas. As you correctly said, the far right party in Spain actually lost ground in the recent elections there. But we're not seeing that in France. We're seeing the far-right party, the National Front, still looks very strong in the polls. We see the alienation, the polarization in French society. What confidence do you have and why that the center in France can hold the way the center seems to be holding in Spain? It's, of course, very difficult to, to say and to explain fully what we see is that we have a different political system from Spain or Germany or Italy, for instance. We have a, a presidential system. We also have a more radical, sometimes political culture. Uh, but we have stability. And in this system, President Macron, as you know, won twice against the far-right candidates. It was difficult. It was not a given. And we've also demonstrated that we were able to stand at the center with a pro-European agenda, pro-reform agenda. Of course, it's a fight which will take a long time, to be very frank, because far-right parties or extremist parties are strong, because they leave, uh, they use uh, difficulties, the social difficulties, the political fatigue in, our, in all our democracies. We see that in a different manner in the UK with Brexit, in the US in the previous years. So let's be honest, it will not be a a simple fight. It will not be just a few years uh, moments. It will be, I think, a long fight for my generation in politics 
to fight. But there's no, what is interesting in Spain is that there's no uh, fatal way which is leading to the far right gaining ground and gaining ground using immigration, using social difficulties uh, to get momentum and to get votes. So we will do this fight again uh, against Madame Le Pen, her party, and I'm sure that if we stand very clearly on this pro-European agenda, this pro-democratic agenda against Russia of Putin, which Madame Le Pen supported very clearly, we have a way to remain strong at the center. French Transport Minister Clement Bon, thank you so much for joining us this morning.